And we have seen such a shift from traditional sources like books and early internet searches to interactive platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and even AI-driven content. This shift has brought about both merits and concerns, particularly in how health information is presented and consumed. So the internet's gynecologist, Dr. Jen, is back now to talk about uh, the media's role in women's health. And we've got Dr. Marjorie Dixon with us as well. Thank you for coming. I see that you're both on this, you're in your Barbie era, both of you, exactly. looking very good. We got the memo. You got yeah. the memo. We're going to start with you, Dr. Dixon. So how has the digital revolution reshaped the way we are taking in information about women's health? So the, the digital explosion has, in a way, <laughs> helped. Because initially, when I was coming on the show 2009, we were really educating and empowering women with information about women's health. Mm -hmm. It was destigmatizing. People were embarrassed to talk about it. We did endometriosis, fibroids, fertility. Now people talk about it. So it's done a service in one way. Yeah. But on the other hand, I find myself debunking myths and misinformation a lot more than I have ever been mm -hmm. by virtue of these platforms <laughs> and these doctors that pop up on the platforms as, as experts, as digital experts that aren't necessarily so. So you ha sort of have to be careful and weed out the fake news. Dr. Jen, there is a lot of advice going out there on TikTok these days. What impact do you see that the health and wellness gurus, <laughs> what impact are they having on us? Yeah, a lot of negative impact. So I see lots of people coming in on just reams of supplements that they don't need. Um, people wanting to have testing that isn't indicated. Um, I see people who have stopped their birth control to do uh, fertility testing, at-home testing, which we don't recommend. And then they get a result saying that maybe they won't be able to get pregnant, so they don't go back on contraception. And six weeks later, they've got an unplanned pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So there are some real, real you know, complications, anxiety from people wearing continuous glucose monitors who don't need them, eating disorders triggered from all these, you know, diets that we see. It's really a hot mess out there. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about fertility. Uh, how has this impacted fertility health specifically, according to you, Dr. Marjorie? Yeah, so the one big one downside, we've talked about timeliness is of the essence when you're trying to figure out your fertility. So, mm -hmm. you know, women are having babies later, etc. But then they'll find something online and they will sort of settle on it as, as biblical, mm -hmm. as the gospel. And it inadvertently delays their time coming to treatment. So we're all about accessibility, getting the information, but getting in to see a specialist sometimes takes time. You don't want to delay that further because you've gotten misinformation. Yeah. And people need to understand that just because someone goes on into a chat room or someone on TikTok or someone on Instagram says something about their own personal fertility experience, it's not necessarily going to be yours. And so you have to really find a reliable source. That, that's been the hardest thing for fertility patients, I think, getting misguided mm -hmm. and waiting to get to care. Well, let's talk about sources then, because how do we, Dr. Jen, figure out what's real and what's not real online? Like, the, it's the wild, wild west. Yeah. I see a lot of bad information coming out from chat rooms as well. And in fact, some of these chat rooms actually kick people out who start like, you know, saying, hey, that's not quite right. Oh. And so, so you have to be very, very careful about that type of thing. You know, I would say that anyone who is selling you a product, if they're selling you a supplement, if they're selling you a diet, if they're selling you something, then they're a salesperson. They're not a health communicator, right? Mm -hmm. I would say that you want to look for someone that's truly an expert. Now, that's not a guarantee. There yeah. are doctors selling scammy stuff, right. as mm -hmm. we all know. Mm -hmm. um, there are registered dietitians selling scammy diets. But in general, if you want to look for a registered dietitian, you want to look for a physician, you want to look for a physical therapist, you want to look, depending on sort of the area that you're looking for, and then you want to see, can you verify what they say from a recognized expert? So does their respective a medical society, if you look on their site, so if it's an OBGYN, you go to the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada, can you find that same information there? Mm-hmm. Okay, so you've actually called us out before on social <laughs> media because of research we cited. You know, we accept culpability there. <laughs> so what does one do when there is scientific evidence and studies on opposing viewpoints? So, because we think, oh, well, there's a study, and the study says this. Right. But then there's also a study that says the mm -hmm, opposite. Right. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I just want to thank you for being one of the only media that I've ever worked with that has actually taken that kind of feedback and said, hey, we need to do better. So mm -hmm. that, that really says yeah. a lot. Absolutely. We're trying to 
to make sure our audience has the best information possible right. so we could use the help. Right. You know, just tell us what we, should, we can do better in the future if we've got opposing studies. Yeah, so it's very difficult because, you know, science, first of all, is complex and it changes. So what we knew 10 years ago isn't what we know now. Mm -hmm. And so people often think, well, but if you change your mind about that, that means you might change your mind again. I think that when we start to see, it's very important not to make big decisions based on one study. Mm -hmm. In general, in medicine, we want to see multiple studies that the, all of the experts have agreed on this is kind of going in the right direction because we've also heard a lot about scientific fraud and papers that have been mm -hmm. retracted. So we want to see this thing multiple times. If something is worth changing a medical opinion over, it's almost always in a society guideline. There's always like a position paper, there's something written about that. And it can be very challenging because people will share articles and they might even be in what's called a predatory journal, meaning it's a junk journal that we mm -hmm. shouldn't even be looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, let's talk about how we can be more aware of what is sponsored medical information, yeah, Dr. So Dixon. When you talk about um, media, there's paid, earned, social media, and owned. Mm -hmm. And people don't recognize that a lot of the things that doctors can get behind, they've paid to promote themselves. Mm -hmm. In fact, you have to be very discerning. Did you know that it's reasonable? So, there's something called search engine optimization. So it's fair game on the internet for a doctor to buy another doctor, for example, my name, to promote their business. Mm. That's legitimate, it sounds fraudulent, but these things happen and who are the who, who falls prey to it? Patients. So patients mm -hmm. will look up a doctor that they know is reasonable, that's associated with the Canadian Fertility and Andrology Society or the American Society for Reproductive Medicine, infertility, reliable governing bodies, but then get pulled into another website and not get reliable information. So patients have to be very careful even they go to a website and they have a chat bot. They think they're talking immediately with Susan or Jennifer. But it's a programmed chat room that is also still in its infancy online. Mm -hmm. So it's getting trained to manage patients. So you have to be careful about the information you get when you think you're having a conversation with a medical professional. But it's a chat bot. And eventually it might get somewhere reasonable. But yeah. patients need to be aware that often they can be duped. And so it's important to be very discerning because paid ads, things that people promote, taking other people's names for your gain without getting better information for patients is my bugbear. It drives me crazy. Yeah. We're trying to get information to patients in the right way, so you have to be discerning. It also chips away at your credibility is if they're dragging your name into things that are not true, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's not cool. Mm -hmm. Okay, what role should doctors and media play in ensuring the accuracy of health information in the media, Dr. Jen? Well, I think that, you know, physicians really have a duty to speak up. Not everybody mm -hmm. is as comfortable, you know, being on TV or, you know, spouting things off on social media. <laughs> and that's okay. We all have different areas of expertise, but people can help give more information in the office so people don't feel they need to go online as much. Mm -hmm. But I think also media has to really realize that there aren't two valid sides to every story. Mm -hmm. That sometimes there right. are things that are really, this is really it. And people who are promoting an alternate view aren't medically accurate. And the story is sometimes just one-sided, and that's okay. And, yeah. you know, there are exciting ways to present, to present that information. Always. If it goes viral, it doesn't mean it's real. Yeah. Right. And, and women fall prey. We're very open-minded. So we'll say, that other argument, I heard that, but maybe this is real too. There doesn't mm -hmm. always have to be a reasonable opponent, uh, opponent okay. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And propaganda works. So studies tell us that it takes five exposures to ridiculous information to start to believe that it could be true. How ridiculous? The earth is a perfect square. The tallest person is 35 feet. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So if you think about TikTok or Instagram and you're on and you see a reel and it's bad information and you watch it all the way through to the end, that tells the algorithm you want to watch that content all the way through to the end. So your whole feed is now contaminated mm -hmm. with that. That's why I see shark attack videos all the time because I'm <laughs> terrified of those. <laughs> I see dogs. <laughs> I like watching puppies, right? Oh my gosh, so we have to like train our feeds as well. Uh -huh. You have train to the algorithm to follow reputable sources yes. Yes. and reputable and information. Curate your resources. Yeah. Curate it. And, yeah, and block people who are spreading misinformation. If you see somebody who they have great fashion tips, but they're also promoting a supplement, block them because you know what? There's people who are promoting great fashion tips who aren't selling a supplement. Right. People don't deserve your attention, they should earn it. And if they're trying to profit off you in ways like that, then they don't actually care about you, they care about your money.
Absolutely. Good advice.